Um, and uh, it's, it's great to have each and every one of you here today. We're in a series that is called You Rule. And this is about Jesus who came to be our one true king and who came establishing God's kingdom, inaugurating God's kingdom, start, kicking it off, starting it off. And as we've gone through the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter uh, 5, and now we're in chapter 6, uh, Jesus has said this kingdom's unlike anything else and run like nothing else in the world. It, it's a kingdom where, where God is honored as king, where uh, people are honored, and where, where things like forgiveness reign, things like honoring uh, each other um, and honoring our word and honoring uh, how we treat each other is, is a big deal. And so uh, today we are going to read about worry. And Jesus is going to talk about worry, but I want to remind us that as he talks about worry, Jesus is talking about worry in the, in the context of something else. And so that, that's something we need to be reminded of this morning because sometimes we think that all worry is bad worry and you should never ever worry. And so every time you worry, you should feel guilty. Does anybody ever remember kind of feeling that way when you read a, a text about worry? And, uh, but this is in context of something. And I just want you to know, or to take a deep breath right now. Especially if you're a parent, especially if you're a mom, you're going to worry. And that's okay, and God understands that. God knows that. But there's something about how we worry and what we're worried about that God has something to say about. And so worry is part of the human condition, okay? So I want you to look at the person next to you and say, you worry too much, but it's okay. All right, just just let them know that. All right, and and um, take a deep breath. How many of you would say I'm a, I'm a worrier? I just I just am. Okay, I want you to feel up for saying that. Let's let's admit that. Okay, um, we we worry about things. Your your mind is wired to chew things over and over and over again. How many of you are the kind of person that yeah you know some people think. They worry about everything that can go wrong, but I can beat that. Anybody like that here? I had um, early on as a pastor, and it was fortunate to have this person, but at the same time, I had to kind of corral this. I had to learn how to corral this. But, but she had been an executive uh, secretary for Honeywell, a uh, Fortune 500 company, and um, she could out-detail and out-worry anybody about anything and, and she would think of every detail in fact if, if you tried to have all the details straight she would send you a list of 50 more that you forgot and that kind of thing and I, I finally here's here's how I dealt with it because it was in a very mature way I was 20 something at the time and in a very mature way I just said stop doing that stop it stop it and there has to be an end to the details an end to the to the questions and and things like that. I was very mature at the time in how I handled that, right? Do you ever feel like as you're worrying about things that you just want to say to yourself, stop that. Stop it. You're, you're in the middle of the night. And the ideas just keep coming through your head more and more and more and more and more. Well, it could be this. No, it could be that. It's probably this because that's a way worse than all the other stuff. And well, what could be worse than that? And then you're down a trail and, and that kind of thing. You just want to go stop it. And in fact, you may have helpful people in your life who, when you're worried, know exactly what to say. And it's always something like this. Stop worrying. That's helpful. Right? How many of you, when someone says stop worrying, that's done it for you? That's been the key, right? No one has their hand raised right at the moment, all right? Hey, men, we especially need to know this. That when your wife or your spouse or significant other is worried about something, telling them stop worrying will make them double down on the worry. I just want you to know that. But I also want you to know, Jesus addresses this. And he does so in kind of a callous way. 
You know, in, in our society, we live in a nation in which one out of every six people is on some kind of anxiety medicine. It's nothing to be ashamed of. It needs to be managed and things like that. Uh, but, but it's in that kind of a context that Jesus just says, hey, don't worry. Don't worry about your life. Stop being anxious about things. And it sounds kind of callous to us. But again, it's in the context of something. So I, I want us to read through this text here real quick. And uh, the, the text is um, Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 34. And we're going to take chunks of it as we go. And then we'll talk about it a little bit. And then I, I'm just going to follow up with a couple of things that help us out. Um, remember, Jesus has talked about some practices that we need. The practices we're giving... Uh, uh, to, to help assist the, the needy and the poor, uh, prayer and fasting. These were practices that if we want to internalize what he taught us in, in chapter 5 and internalize those things, prepare our hearts for those things, we need to do something on the inside and not just do something on the outside. Okay, He, he wants us to do something on the inside, not for the uh, applause of other people around us. And he talked to us, to us about being, don't be a hypocrite. And remember what a hypocrite was. was. was an actor up on a stage who was was basically doing something for the applause of others, okay? Um, so another word for that kind of thing would be Facebook, social media, right? Where you do things you wouldn't ordinarily do all for the pl applause or notice of other people. And so it's in the context of that kind of thing that Jesus would tell us this kind of thing. So remember the practices, but also remember we're not doing things for the applause of others, okay? That has to be in the back of our mind, all right? And so Jesus says, therefore, I tell you, do not be worried about your life. Stop worrying. No, no, don't hear that just yet. <laughs> do not worry about your life. What you will eat or drink or about your body what you will wear is not life more than food and the body more than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns. And yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can you, can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? And some of us are going, I don't know. That's why I worry. I want to see if it'll work, right? Let me give you a definition of worry. This, this has nothing to do with the Greek or anything like that. This is just out of, out of uh, Webster's here. It says, to give way to anxiety or unease. To allow one's mind to dwell on actual or potential problems. So they don't even have to be real problems, right? It could be a potential problem. How many of you have ever worried about a potential problem? Yeah. Something that never came true, but you had it covered, right? You had it worried about, right? Let me give you some synonyms. To fret. Uh, to be concerned. To be anxious. To agonize. Can I hear an amen? To overthink. To brood. Panic. To lose sleep. To get worked up. To get stressed. To get in a state. Have you ever been in a state? To stew. To torment yourself. How many of you have done any or all of those things before? Amen? Amen. All right. Well, here's another meaning to the word to worry. What worrying is, is what a dog does to a bone when it tears at it or gnaws at it or drags it around by their teeth. Have you ever heard that before? A dog worrying a bone? I had never heard that before. I thought maybe this is wrong. So I looked it up in another dictionary and sure enough, number two is dog chewing on a bone. But you think about that. I have had pets that would literally chew on a bone until their, till their gums bled. They'd just chew on it and 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 chew on it. And in fact, there were dogs that I escorted out of the room so that I didn't have to hear that, right? They would just chew on it. It's like nervous chewing or something like that. And they just, they just have to be going at it. 
right? Isn't that what worry is kind of like in your brain? Sometimes we worry until our brains bleed. We just do. And sometimes we worry about really important things and sometimes not so important things. And Jesus is talking about something specific here. He's just been talking about money. And he makes this transition and he says, don't worry about your life. We'll put that in context. What you're going to eat and drink. So he's talking to an impoverished crowd, peasants. And they would have had to worry about what they ate or drink. In fact, many of them uh, would have been subsistence workers. That means that the money they made today was for food today. Many of us in this room, we're not in that situation. We would have worries about food in a very different way. Uh, much, much like Megan said earlier, um, my family's already bugging me about what we're going to eat and that kind of thing. Uh, our family has already had conversations about what we're going to do with lunch and several different ideas and things like that. I think we landed on a winner. I don't know. It could change at any moment. All right. We worry about food in a very different way. Um, they would have worried about clothes. And we worry, worry about clothes in a very different way. We have worries about these things. But he says, don't worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink. And he's, he's saying uh, there's some things in this life that if you make it a practice to begin worrying about those things... It's going to condition you not to be a kingdom person, but to live by the rules of this world. And much like prayer is a practice and much like um, uh, fasting is a practice and giving is a practice that we that we as we practice it, it changes our heart and it changes our mind because it gets us in tune with what God's kingdom is like that worrying about certain things and for certain reasons is a practice that we engage in that changes our mind and changes our hearts and puts us in tune with a very different kind of kingdom than the kingdom of God. And so, uh, don't worry about what you will eat or what you will drink. And he kicks it up a little bit notch, uh, a notch, or what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? And he tells us something that we know but that we don't know. Now, our worries about food are, are very different. We mainly worry about what we're going to eat and what we're going to drink, um, not because of, man, I just won't make it today because I didn't eat yesterday and I need to eat something today. How do I get food? But what am I going to eat? How much of it am I going to eat? And what new diet am I going to be on? And things like that. We're really concerned about food in our society. <laughs> I have a son and a daughter not here this morning. And if you're watching, sorry, but I'm using you as an illustration. I just won't fill in the names. Um, their initials are Jerry and Ellen. And they talk about food constantly. They just, don't they? It's kind of fun. It's kind of fun. And I mean, we will be eating breakfast and they are talking about dinner. What are we going to do for dinner? What should we do? We should maybe should, and we could cut it up like this and we could have it and we could serve it on that one tray, you know, and that kind of thing. And it's kind of funny to watch and kind of that kind of thing. But you know what? As funny as that is, I think about food all the time. Anybody with me? Yeah, I can, I, so we can drive down the street and I can drive by a place and go, oh, they've got the best, you know, that kind of, Anybody with me? And almost, my blinker almost comes on the car by itself or something like that. I can feel the power of whatever spirit it is taking over my car and wanting to go that way. Um, or I'll be working on the computer and maybe answering an email or something like that. Maybe an ad in the side pops up or something is said in the, uh, you know, in the email about food like, isn't it a beautiful day? And I'll go, oh man, brownie ice cream sounds really good right now, you know? I'm, I'm like that. Food consumes us. It, 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 it captures our attention for a very different reason. It captures our heart. But he goes on to the, to the clothing thing. Don't worry about what you wear. It's not life more than food and the body more than clothes. He reminds us of something, right? We don't live for food. Food is a great gift of God that we might live. 
And when we follow a different kingdom, we get the things backwards. The kind of things that should sustain us become things that we live for. Your body is more than food, more than clothes. You're so much more complicated than that. You're so much better than that. And that's a small part of life. It's an important part of life, but it's a small part of life. Don't be consumed by that kind of thing. He goes, Looks at the, look at the birds of the air. They don't sow or reap or stow away in barns. And it almost makes it sound like, okay, so if I'm just like the birds, I'll never ever have to be hungry again or anything like that. And that's not what this text is saying. This text is talking about how the birds are doing what birds were created to do. Flying around, doing what birds do. We've got a hummingbird feeder out on our back deck, and it is incredible. And let me just tell you, birds do worry. Birds are always looking over their shoulder for a cat. Birds are always looking over their shoulder for another bird. Have you ever watched hummingbirds? They are vicious little birds. They're as cute as a bug. I mean, they're just, and they're about the size of a large bee, you know, and that kind of thing. But another hummingbird comes around and they are fighting. They're fighting. So this isn't talking about how birds just have it so easy and they don't have to work hard. Birds work all day long. Birds work hard for their food. But they do what birds do. They don't worry about building barns. They don't worry about filling those barns up or storing for more or not ever having enough. They just keep at doing what God created them to do. And there is something about the kind of worry Jesus is talking about that takes us out of what we were created to do and makes us do something we were not created to do. The birds are doing what they were created to do. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? Then he goes on. And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin, yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all of his splendor dressed like one of these. If that's how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Now, again, they would have worried about clothing, much like we worry about clothing. We worry about it in a little bit of a different way. But here, our worries would kind of be in line with theirs. Clothes have always been a symbol of status, a symbol of where you're at in society. He's going to warn them, I mean, don't, don't, don't be like that. Don't, don't be uh, somebody who really worries about, uh, about clothes because the pagans do that. And, and clothes were a marker of where you stand in society. Our worries about clothes are more about, um, <laughs> is it in? Uh, is it acceptable? Do I fit? You know, uh, I, I have all kinds of clothes um, that I've kept f for years and I've looked in my closet and it's not that I buy clothes all the time or anything like that. It's that I don't throw clothes away. And so I have clothes that are probably, I don't know, okay, a good 20 years old. A good, I, I know that because one of them has a date on it that we went on a trip in 2001 and it has a date on it. So I have clothes that are like 20 years old that I wear, that I wear and, and, and things like that. And so I just don't throw those away, but, but we may not be that caught up in fashion and that kind of thing. And the great thing about if you're not caught up in fashion um, is that you don't realize that that thing that you just bought and taught home and thought, wow, this looks kind of new and fresh and that kind of thing. It's already out of date by the time you get it home. There's already another trend or something like that going on. So he's talking about this in the same kind of way that he was talking about doing religious practices in front of others, that our clothing gives us status, that our food as well, how much of it we have, gives us a status in society. And he's saying, don't worry about these things. Not that we shouldn't be wise about these things, but don't worry about them. 
That worry is a practice. That worry is something that teaches your mind a certain way to live, that teaches your body a certain way to be. And God takes care of what he created. One of the things this points out is that, you know what? God didn't just create this world in a way that takes care of our needs. You know, he could have created oxygen in a lot of different ways. In fact, he could have just created some kind of gelatinous green goo that covered the earth, took in sunlight, and let out oxygen. He didn't do that. He created some of the most beautiful trees. Have you ever driven to the East Coast and seen what the forests are like there? They're very different than our forests. They're they're just spectacularly different. And I've heard people that drive from the East Coast to here feel that way about our forests as well. They go, man, the trees are just so different. It has a different look. It has a different feel. It's just so beautiful. When you go to a different country, and I was able to go to Australia, there are all these huge, tall trees with white bark on them, and and they're just gorgeous and beautiful. God didn't just create the world in a way that would supply our needs. He didn't just create protein blocks for food. He gave us variety and beauty. This is an extravagant world to live in. And one of the things that Jesus is, take, is, is talking to us about is get into a rhythm in your life where you understand not only is God taking care of your needs, but he's doing so in an extravagant, wonderful, beautiful way. Incredible. See how the flowers of the field grow. They don't labor or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor dressed like one of these. Is If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and then tomorrow thrown in the fire. Jesus lived in the Middle East in a desert area. If you've ever been in a desert area, you'll know that it'll rain every now and then. And all of a sudden, the desert looks like all of the, there's grass growing everywhere. There's flowers growing everywhere. And then in about a week, it's all gone. It's intense beauty for a week. And, and it's almost like you live in a different world now. And God is saying, you know what? I've created a beautiful world for you. I'm going to take care of you as well. Can you trust your heavenly father. So he says, so don't worry, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? For the pagans run after all of these things. And your heavenly father knows that you need them. The real question when it comes to this kind of worry is can your heavenly father be trusted? Can he be trusted? That issue that you're running over and over and over in your mind. Yeah, God God probably wants you to be concerned about that issue. But the question is, what are you going to do with that issue? Where are you going to take it? When we just run things over and over and over in our minds... Do we ever feel better about it? After losing a full night's sleep, regurgitating the same thing over and over again? No, the next day you're miserable. Here's what, here's what Jesus is getting at. Your heavenly Father cares enough about you. Bring your worries to Him. Bring them to Him. Set them at His feet. Quit running them over in your brain and give them to him. The pagans chase after all this stuff. The reason why they do is because they've got to get it right for their gods. They've got to present their problems to their gods in just the right ways or those gods won't even look at their problems, won't do anything about their problems. They've got to con their gods into taking care of their problems. And Jesus is saying, your heavenly father is begging of you. Trust me. Trust me in this. Trust me in this. And then he says this. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. 
Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. If you have the priority, if you have the priority of seeking first his kingdom, what that means is that make God your king first. Have God as your king first. And then his righteousness, live the way that Jesus teaches you to live. Just make that your priority. And guess what? God, your extravagant giving God, the, the God that can't be outgiven, the God that, that is full of grace and full of mercy, that could flood you with all of these things, He'll take care of those things as well. I just want to ask real quick, because some of us here, some of us here have had to learn this lesson to trust God, and He'll take care of things. How many of you have kind of learned this lesson the hard way? That if I trust God, he'll take care of the things. If I trust God, he'll take care of the stuff. If I trust God, he'll take care of the stuff that I'm worried about. And they, you, know, you know what? God even takes care of stuff as good as you are at worrying that you don't even know you need to worry about yet. Because God is way better at worrying than you are. And he's way more effective at it. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. He's saying each day has enough trouble of its own. Isn't that right? Amen. We can't create tomorrow's worries for today. He says you've got to deal with today's worries. There's stuff you've got to deal with today. Is God saying that if you don't worry, all of your problems will go away and dissipate and you'll never face another problem in the world? No. But here's the deal. When you worry, you are, you, are, you are engaging in a kind of prayer. And it is a kind of godless prayer. A kind of prayer where you're reinforcing to yourself, I'm all there is, I've got to deal with it. I'm all there is, I've got to deal with it. I'm all there is, I've got to deal with it. And you know what? Many of you are just really awesome at taking care of things. How many of you are just incredibly capable people? Or husbands, how many of your wives are just incredibly capable people? I mean, they can do so much, and you're amazed by how much they can do. And on top of that, while they're doing all the things, they're really capable of asking you to do a lot as well, right? Right? Amen? And, and so you're, our, we're just amazing people. And so I just have something that represents each and every one of us here. An amazing person. An amazing person that is able to handle so much in life. Because, I mean, you're able to do more than one thing. How many of you are good multitaskers here? Yeah, I can do three, four different things at once. I'm great at multitasking. However, I am very capable of messing up three things all at one time. All right? Three very different projects and, and taking care of things. Here's the deal. When we begin to worry and we begin to tell ourselves, I'm all there is... I'm the only one that can handle this. You are able to handle some problems. You're able to. I mean, you're able to handle the bills, maybe. And you're worried about the bills coming up. And it feels kind of like a weight on you, doesn't it? But you can handle that. Come on. You've been through a lot. You can handle things. And I am always amazed at what people can handle. I mean, there, there are some people that can handle some really huge things. You think this person can handle this? It's amazing because this person can handle that. Big, huge stuff. Health problems. I got this. I can handle it. See, because my capacity at worry is just amazing. Honed. But if I work out every day, it's, it's work out, working out with the worry. I mean, I've, I've got that worry down. I've expanded my capacity to worry. I can worry about so many different things. And, and I'm just going to keep worry about, worrying about things. Let's, let's worry about something a little bit more manageable this time. And, you know, relationship worries and things like that. And let's worry about, oh, um, um, the work worries. There's all kinds of worries that I need to worry about at work. How many of you are starting to feel like this cup right now? 
And you're juggling so many different worries, and you were worrying things. And you know what? Your worry is not a kind of worry that says, Lord, this is an issue. It's real. And I need you. Your worry is kind of this cycle of how am I going to do this? How can I take care of this? What's the worst that could happen? How am I going to handle this? How would I ever even deal with this? And if I can deal with this, how, how am I going to work it out? And you just keep stacking things up on you. I see mamas do this a lot. Mamas take on the worries of all their children. And the amazing thing is they're able to handle a lot. It's incredible how much some of us can handle. But you know what? For each and every stinking one of us, there comes a time when it's too stinking much. Right? How many of you feel like that? And here's the deal. Jesus says that's a practice you don't want to get involved in. That's a practice your heavenly father didn't make you to carry all of that stuff. Your heavenly father loves you so much that he also cares about all the things. I don't even I don't even know what you're worried about. Some of you aren't quite sure what you're worried about. And the fact that you're not sure what to worry about has you worried, right? But we're not created to have to be in control of every situation and one of the greatest things that we can do if we're truly going to put the kingdom first if we're truly going to live this life is we're going to have to realize my God created me wonderfully and graciously but he created me with limits and he created me in a context that works best if I seek First, his kingdom and his righteousness. And if I hang things on that hanger first, all the other stuff is going to begin to fall into place. It's not going to be easy. It's not always going to be smooth. It's all, not always going to be neat. But he's going to help me prioritize this stuff. And I, my role in all of this is to trust him as king of my life First, do you know what that means? That means I don't put all this weight on me. I put all this weight on him. And you know what? God can handle more weight than this table can handle. And he can handle all of those things. And he knows what you need. And he is able to take those things from you. And here's the deal. You won't stop worrying about them. You won't stop being concerned about them. But what you're going to begin to do is a new practice of deciding, all right, Lord, I'm not just going to anxiously run this over and over and over and over and over in my mind. What I'm going to begin to do is I'm going to short circuit that the best that I can. I'm going to short circuit that. I'm going to seek you first. Lord, in this thing, what is your will? You're the king and I am not. In this thing, what is your will? What is your will? What is your will, Lord? What is your will and how do I glorify you? What is your will and how do I glorify you? That, you know what that is? That's seeking God's kingdom and his righteousness. What is your will and how do I glorify you? Hey, you're sick. I know you're sick. I, I know it's not the news that you wanted. And you know what? One thing I do know is that what's not going to make you better is obsessing about it. Let's deal with the facts. You're sick. How do we give that to God? Lord, I don't know why I'm sick. I, all I know is that this world is broken by sin and I'm caught up in it and now I'm sick. And Lord, worrying about it isn't making it any better. But Lord, I want you to know this. I know you're king. 
And so in my sickness, your will be done. If you heal me, I will give you glory. If you do not heal me, Lord, I'll find a way to give you glory. Now, how do I do that, Lord? You know what? That's a lot different than obsessing about it and clicking on everything on the internet about it and looking at everything about it and being just obsessing about it and that kind of thing. Be responsible, but listen, worry is not a responsible thing. Worry ties up all your energy. It taxes you. Worry is not productive. In fact, if you can settle into trusting God in issues, He will give you strength and He'll give you clarity of mind and He will help you with what the next step is. He just will. He just will. And He will show you ways to glorify Him through circumstances you didn't know could bring God glory and your good. He'll do it. He'll do it. Amen. What do you want to do? Do you want God to support the issues in your life? Or do you want to end up like my good friend? <laughs> Let's bow our heads for just a moment. How many of you look like this cup right now? You're just under it all. I just want you to know something. God didn't make you to be bowled over by life. He wants to fill and support you in a way that you, that you can thrive in this life. And He cares about your issue, but you've got to trust Him with it. You've got to trust Him with it. So right now, let's just, let's just pray this prayer. And maybe this is a prayer you need to pray all week. Lord, how do I need to make you king in this issue? How do I, meet, how do I make you king in my life? How do I let you call the shots? How do I surrender to you? Lord, how do we do that? We want you to be king. We want you to rule. We want you to reign. And we want you to be glorified. And Lord, we believe that in the midst of all of that, all these other things will be taken care of. Because you rule. You rule. For my friends that deal with anxiety that is out of control, Lord, I just pray for them. No, nobody knows what that is like. If, if, if you don't experience that, you, you just don't know the battle that that is, the weight that that puts on you. For those of us whose emotions and the chemical compounds in our brains are just screwed up enough that that's our issue, Lord, I just pray for peace in the midst of that. Somehow, can you bring us peace? For the rest of us that kind of train ourselves to do those things, can you untrain us? So that we can bring these issues before you in prayer and in peace. And Lord, you have promised us. You have promised us that you can bring us perfect peace by your presence. Would you do that for us now? We know that that means that life's not just going to magically become easy. And all of a sudden everything is peachy and rosy. But Lord... One of the things that will happen is that we will be blown away by the solutions to problems that you have that we never thought of before. And we give you the glory and we give you the praise. And we seek your kingdom and your righteousness today. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to invite the worship team to come up and help me clean my mess up. Would you stand with us as we worship together? Wow, that's a lot of books. Thank you for your continued giving. If you have any questions about giving, feel free to come talk to myself or Pastor Steve, and we'd be glad to sit down and share with you. So, all right, let's close.